Las Vegas is an affront to nature. Humans, humans shouldn't live here. The F900GS is a total redesign from its predecessor, the F850. The front end has finally lost that enormous beak, though there's still a tiny one if you look carefully. The rear end is almost naked, like it has a factory tail tidy, and suspension travel is overall increased from the old bike. All signs point to Enduro, right? Well, not all of them. See, the 900 in that 900 GS is the new, larger motor, putting out 105 horsepower and just under 70 pound-feet of torque. There isn't an Enduro in the world that puts down those kinds of numbers. BMW is specifically targeting KTM here. The midsize adventure market has long had one fastest competitor, and BMW wants a slice of that pie. True, it's less horsepower than the Ducati Desert X, but this bike feels narrower between the legs. More enduro. Now, a highway comfortable enduro sounds like it would be the perfect adventure bike. All the capability you could want out in the dirt, and all the comfort you could want here on the highway. But that's not exactly what you're getting. Out in the dirt and gravel, this bike is confidence-inspiring. It's narrow, it's lighter than its predecessor. It's overall a good bike to take out into dirt, gravel, sand, whatever you're looking to do. But remember that when you drop it, you're still picking up 480 pounds of motorcycle. It's not quite an enduro for lightness, because you need that second cylinder. And yet, out here on the highway, things aren't perfect either. This windscreen is almost worse than none at all. I have never ridden a bike this loud at highway speeds. I know, I know, I have a giant GoPro mounted to my helmet right now, but I wasn't wearing that this morning, and this was loud enough that I couldn't think. If you tuck down behind the windshield, things are pretty fine, but I'm too tall for that to be a comfortable pose. BMW does offer an accessory windshield that should hopefully mitigate some of that, but there will certainly be aftermarket options as well as more of these hit the road. The other struggle on the highway is this seat. It's great off-road when you're standing, because it's nice and narrow between your legs. You're not really running into it, it's not getting in your way. Here though, it is so stiff. I've been out on this bike for hours and hours today, and it is no longer comfortable to be sitting on this phone. But of course, that's also something the aftermarket will pick up there will be other seats for this bike. If you are going to be taking this bike out for adventures, it's worth thinking about the fuel range. The tank is slightly downsized from the 850 GS. It's lighter, which is nice, but it's also not going to get you quite the distance. Fuel economy here, nothing to write home about. Think in the 30 to 40 range. So you're not getting that 200 miles per tank that a lot of people like. But that brings us to the price point. See, once it's optioned up, you're not likely to roll out of a dealership on one of these for less than seventeen and a half or eighteen thousand dollars. For that kind of money, I don't want to have to go to the aftermarket for windshields and seats. But these are matters of individual comfort. If you're not quite so bony as me, you might find the seat fine. If you're not quite so tall, you might love the windshield. The F900GS is a bike built so specifically for my tastes. I want an omni-capable highway tourer that is better than I am off-road. I want that. The target market is me. And if I had the money, if 
for the bike and the seat and a windscreen, it would be very tempting, especially in this Sao Paulo yellow colorway, which uh, I want. I love it. It's so good. 